So, Lucy, uh, Infosys, the India-based outsourcing group, has announced a new chief executive today. Who is he and where does he come from? Um, they've announced that Vishal Sikha is going to be the new CEO. He comes from SAP and he has quite an interesting background, in fact. Uh, he was the chief technology officer there uh, and he presided over uh, an improvement in SAP's business model, effectively, uh, innovation, uh, technology innovation period, which was implemented around the mid noughties uh, He was one of the co-architects of, of this change in the business model uh, based on a new technology platform, uh, which has kind of been quite transformational for SAP, actually. And so since 2009, the company has seen a great improvement uh, in their business. Um, so it's, it, it's potentially interesting because Infosys is, is, has been stagnating for a while now. Mm, so what, what does Infosys need? Can, can the, new, the new man bring this kind of magic to Infosys share price? Well, the market is slightly uh, in two minds about this because, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Dr. Sika is, a, is an innovator and, and not so much of an exec, executor. So it'll be interesting to see whether he can go from product development, firstly also, to being a service provider. Uh, and, and as I say, the market was slightly undecided, very excited at first, and then, and then a little bit less sure as his background came out. And undoubtedly, uh, the man is quite inspirational. He was apparently very uh, thoughtful and convincing in, in the announcement uh, and in the conference that he gave. Uh, so he's, he's definitely a new broom, and he's not one of the founding fathers as well, which is probably very much what the company needed. Mm. And what, what's the problem being at Emphasis? It's had a, a troubled few years. Yes, they, they were almost in exactly the opposite position of SAP, funnily enough. Around the period when SAP was going through its technology transformation, uh, Infosys was uh, trying to move up the value chain, and, and unfortunately they timed it almost exactly to coincide with the global financial crisis. And so as they were trying to add more value-added and more expensive services to provide for their customers, that was exactly the time when the customers were cutting back. So they've seen returns falling, uh, and they've had a very bad few years pretty much since 2007. Uh, and they've most recently had, had a huge amount of um, turmoil in their, in their management leadership. Uh, last year they had to bring back one of the previous founders, Murti, uh, in order to, to sort of re-steer the ship and he's taken it very much back to the core business and the bread and butter, you know, the plain outsourcing service provision. So it'll be interesting to see how this new sort of disruptive innovator, if you like, is going to fit his strategy into the company and potentially uh, emphasis with its large cash pile, you know, he might take that and, and, and move the company in a different direction, which has, an, which has more of an innovative uh, incubation unit within it and run the two businesses side by side. So there's in, in the medium to long term, there's quite a lot of potential for him to do something, but, but the concern short term will be how much further disruption the company has to go through. Sounds like it'll be a tricky balance for this disruptive innovator to try and bring some stability to emphasis. Lucy, thanks very much.